Hello everyone. In this session, I am going to explain the interview question. What is an X path, and what is the difference between absolute and relative X path, and uh, how to give the examples also. Okay, this is the interview question, guys. So if you divide this interview question into three parts, first we have to first we have to explain what is an X path, right? What is an X path? So you can either explain this question in two ways. Okay, you can either explain in a technical way or you can explain in a selenium oriented way. Let's start explaining this particular question in a technical way. So what is an X path then? Technically speaking, X path is a language that can be used for traversing through an XML document. There are different type of programming languages, right? C language, Java language. Similarly, X path is also a language, guys. But its purpose is to, with the help of this language, we can we can traverse through the XML documents. What's the purpose of traversing through this XML documents then? Why we have to traverse or navigate through the XML inside the XML documents? In XML document. There will be some tags, okay? The tags, those tags are nothing but user-defined tags. They doesn't doesn't have any meanings, guys. They are just labels, okay? They are like labels, and in between the tag labels, you will be having some text, okay? For example, if you want to store some data, employee-related data in the XML document, what what is the data that you will store, guys? You can you can create some tags like this: employee name, some X Y Z name, then Slash employee name. You will close a tag. After that, employee location. Maybe another another tag, and you can give the location like Hyderabad, Pune, Bangalore, anything, and then slash employee location. You can end the tag like that. And similarly, employee age slash employee age, and you can store the age of that uh, employee in that in between the tags. Like that, guys. In any type of data, you can structure it using the XML document. Okay. If you want to represent any type of data in the form of XML, you can do that. Uh, you can create your own tags. You can name your own tags, and then in between the tags, you can provide the data related to that particular employee or any other things that you want to represent in that XML document. So, when this kind of data is stored in the XML documents, there is maybe a requirement where we have to retrieve the age of the employee. Okay. For example, if I ask you to retrieve the age of the employee, then what you will do, guys? How you will retrieve the uh, uh, age of an employee from the XML document? Okay, which is stored in Some of the tags, okay. Then there should be a language, right, to traverse through that XML document and get the data of uh, age age of that employee. Okay. Here is where XPath XPath is used. Here is where the XPath is used. Okay. Here is where XPath is used for traversing traversing through this kind of XML documents and retrieving the age of the employee and so. Right. This is the first point that you can explain, guys. After that, you can start explaining that. Since the structure of HTML documents, you know about HTML files, right? Structure of HTML documents is similar to the XML documents. Okay, even HTML also has some tags, guys. Even XML has the tags, and HTML also has a similar type of tags. You already know, right? If if you have to create a paragraph in HTML, what you will do? You will create a p tag, right? You will you will you will you will, you will use a p tag, and uh, you will whatever the paragraph you are going to mention, you will mention between the p p tag and ending p tag, and try to okay use it. So, guys. Uh, So since the uh, structure of the HTML is similar to the XML document, the same XPath language, which is actually originally designed for XML, traversing through the XML documents, can also be used with the for traversing through the HTML documents also. Okay, XPath language used for traversing through the XML documents originally. But since the structure of HTML is similar to the XML document, you can also use the same XPath language for traversing through the HTML documents also. Now, how does XPath language traverses through this XML or HTML documents. Simple guys, XPath language uses some something known as XPath expressions. Okay, XPath language uses something known as XPath expressions. You, with the help of these expressions, we can traverse through any HTML or XML documents and retrieve the desired information that we want. So, these XPath expressions which I am talking about are, are similar to the file path guys. They look similar to the file path like this. Okay. This is example for an XPath expression slash HTML slash body slash UL slash LI slash A. Okay, it looks similar to the file path, right? C colon slash. Okay, C colon uh, slash and then uh, give some folder folder path. It looks similar to that, right? They look similar to the file path. You can explain this thing technically, guys, and say, similarly you can also explain this particular what is an XPath in a Selenium oriented way also. How can you explain that? So in Selenium oriented way, you can explain you can explain XPath expression as something like this. XPath expressions are the one of the types of locators. Okay, 
one of the located types xpath expressions are one of the located type that can be used in that can be used for locating the elements on the web pages there are different type of locators right id locator name locator class name link text partial link text xpath expression css selectors dom like this many uh, many type of locators are there where xpath expressions are one of the one of them one of the locator types which can be used in selenium for locating the elements on the web pages that is a selenium oriented way of explaining the question so explaining this question that is what is an xpath now and one more thing you can mention here is out of all the locators that are available okay that out of all the type of locators that are available xpath expressions are very powerful guys okay are the powerful ones xpath expressions are the powerful ones why i am saying xpath expressions are the powerful ones because they can locate any type of element okay there is very less very 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 less chance that they cannot locate a particular element the xpath expressions are very very uh, powerful that they can they cannot miss any element from being located okay they are very powerful you can construct any type of you, you can construct xpath expressions for any type of locators even complex or small okay or so that's how xpath expressions are powerful and be able to locate any type of elements on the web pages that's why they are powerful um, and coming to other locators there is a possibility that uh, id id may not be there name may not be there class name may not be there link text may not be there partial link text may not be there and in some cases css selectors are also powerful but uh, they cannot traverse upwards okay they can only traverse downwards okay so that's where like xpath expressions can traverse upward and downwards that's why they are xpath expressions are more powerful than css selectors they can that's why xpath expressions can locate any type of elements whereas css selectors can locate most of the elements but they some portion of the elements they cannot locate whereas xpath expressions can traverse upwards and downwards and hence are the powerful locators of all the type of locators available for locating the elements on the web pages and then this is the answer that you have to give for uh, what is an xpath guys you can give on your own way how much you remember you just give that same answer to them okay now guys one more thing here is uh, second part of the question that is they are asking us after what is an xpath they asked uh, then they are asking what is the difference between absolute and relative xpaths what is the difference between the absolute and relative xpath so there are two types of xpath expressions okay there are two types of xpath expressions first type is the absolute xpath expressions and second type of xpath expressions are the relative xpath expressions there are two types of xpath expressions one is absolute xpath and relative xpath though we use relative xpath in real time but there are two types of xpath expression that is absolute and relative so what is absolute xpath then okay what is absolute xpath expression absolute xpath tries to locate the elements from the root guys that is from, that is complete path okay that is complete path from the root element, root uh, tag to the required tag it will go from root tag to the required tag absolute xpath tries to locate the element the locating uh, locating of the element strategy is different here guys okay the difference between absolute and relative is that absolute tries to locate the element from the root okay the complete path should be given for locating the element in absolute xpath coming to relative xpath okay unlike unlike absolute xpath relative xpath tries to locate the element directly in, instead of locating from the root so here locating strategy is different it locates the element directly whereas it locates the element by providing the complete path that is from the root element we have to provide the path where here we don't have to give the complete path, path for locating the elements instead the elements can be located directly okay so i will i will show the example uh, corresponding to this statement okay i have even have to give the examples so i am just giving the examples for absolute xpath and relative xpath let's take this application let me open it here for example if i have to locate this paragraph okay let me inspect in case of absolute xpath okay in case of in case of absolute xpath i have to give the complete path right for locating this paragraph i have to give the complete path so control f here what is the root element html is the root element i have to start from the html slash html you see html got highlighted then again i have to give slash then i have to give body okay in the head section this paragraph is not there so i have to go with the sibling tag that is body tag then slash then i have to give p then at the rate id is equal to what is the id para1 okay this is how you have to locate that yeah here you have given the complete path guys here you have given the complete path this this is an example for the absolute xpath expression now I, I will explain how to give the shortcut path or direct path for locating the elements 
okay which is nothing but relative x path so same element i will locate in a direct way that is i would directly come to the p right i'll simply say double slash here and say p okay now at same time at the rate id is equal to para one i will give that's it guys you see this is shortcut path direct path for locating the elements you don't have to come from the root element here this is a relative x path so so here is the answer got answered right what is an x path this particular question got answered now what is an x path I explained in technical way and uh, selenium oriented way after that i explained the types of x path expressions and then i had differences between absolute and relative x path then i gave the examples for the same so this is how you can answer guys as much as possible in your own way so that interviewer will get a lot of confidence in your answer okay that's it guys thank you bye